between the pages today, Jamaica's prosperous maritime industry looking towards further growth. Plus, job creation is one of the main areas of focus for this administration. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry and this is Jamaica Magazine. Please stay with us. More moments. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. Get active. Eat healthy. You can protect yourself from high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, certain cancer diseases, and more. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, February 27. The Ministry of Finance has received three loans from the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, totaling $248 million U.S. million. The agreements were signed on Monday as part of activities around the two-day 7th Annual Caribbean Governors Meeting of the IDB. The largest portion, $160 million U.S. million, will go towards the country's public sector transformation program. 68 million US dollars will provide technological support for government's implementation of the national identification system NIDS. The backing of the IDB in terms of a loan for the promulgation of the, of the, of the national ID system is, I think, a, a, an ultimate uh, proof of the efficacy of this program. The third loan is for 20 million US dollars to bolster Jamaica's digital capacity in national security. What we're attempting to do here is none other than to move in the direction where Jamaica can truly become a digital society. National Security Minister Robert Montague is reporting that the enhanced security measures in St. James have brought a reduction in crime and stability to the parish. Minister Montague made the disclosure on Saturday as he walked through major thoroughfares in the city and engaged with residents. The security minister says the tour and interactions were necessary to gather views on the ongoing security measures. The goal, he says, is to find a balance between the execution of duties by the security forces and the protection of citizens' rights and privileges. Overall, the, the message has been very congratulatory of the security forces from the ordinary people on the ground. And the, the administration is looking now at moving into the next phase which is to getting the social intervention up. Minister Montague says final preparations are being made to hold a conference with the various responsible agencies to undertake further social intervention programs on a sustainable level. Still in Montego Bay, Mayor Homer Davis says reinforcement measures will be put in place to remove vendors from the streets. The mayor insists that about 500 spaces are in the market to house persons selling on the road. He says the disregard for law and order will not be tolerated. They will have to go into the market. If the space wasn't there, then that would be a different matter. But we are going to enforce compliance. Jamaica has reaped its first harvest of medical cannabis, paving the way for scientific research of the plant for medicinal use. The harvest came from the Timeless Herbal Care's greenhouse operation in Manchester. Timeless is one of 12 companies granted a license from the Cannabis Licensing Authority to grow and process medical marijuana. Speaking at the revealing of the first batch, Finance Minister Audley Shaw said the industry would create major opportunities for Jamaica. It's groundbreaking for groundbreaking, Jamaica, yes. right? It's going to be a foreign exchange earner for us, <laughs> and it's going to create thousands and thousands of jobs across the country. The plant will be processed to allow for the extraction of oils for export to meet the growing demand for medicinal cannabis products globally. This is our first plant of many of reaping and we really want to thank you and the Cannabis Licensing Authority for believing in us and our common mission of working to try and build our country in this industry. And finally, government has allocated $120.7 million to continue the retrofitting of solar systems in schools. It's part of a broader program to reduce public sector electricity bills by between 40 and 70 percent. The money is projected in the 2018-19 budget for the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. 
It doubles the program's financial support in the 2017-18 fiscal year. Targets include the completion, upgrading and repairing of school roofs that have already been assessed. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. The business process outsourcing DPO sector, employing more than 6,000 Jamaicans, putting the youth at work. The kinds of work we are doing right now in Jamaica through our 40 companies established in this industry include applications like Netflix, applications like Amazon. So you're speaking to people about their credit cards. We are doing applications like tech support. So if you have a problem with your your um, iPhone, iMac or laptop, technical questions, those questions are being answered in some of our BPO operations. That's not a sweatshop. Humana has over 400 agents here that when people call the US to query about their health plan, those calls are being handled in Jamaica. <laughs> that's not lowing, that's not, you're working for one of the largest healthcare companies in the world. The local BPO industry, creating employment, boosting the economy. Jamaica continues on a path of growth, primarily so through a thriving business process outsourcing sector, which continues to provide employment for thousands of the country's youth. Hear more now on the sector from Government Minister Daryl Vance. Job creation is one of the main areas of focus for this administration. And indeed, we are reaping success from the plans and programs that we have put in place through the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation and in partnership with the private sector. Statin has already reported that the decline in unemployment rate is at 10.4%, the lowest it has been since October 2008. The youth unemployment rate of 25.4% is also the lowest since January 2008, while female employment continues to increase. Importantly, also, at October 2017, most of those who gained employment were not public sector employees. This is consistent with the GOJ goal for the private sector to be the principal engine of growth. One of the driving forces behind the lowered unemployment rate is, of course, outsourcing, which the government has identified as a key pillar of the economic growth and job creation strategy. In fact, the ICT BPO sector continued to be a high-performing segment of Jamaica's services industry and has enjoyed the highest employment growth rate of any sector in the last decade. We have already surpassed our target of 11,000 jobs for the 2017-18 fiscal year with a forecast of 11,665 jobs created as of November 2017. This administration has taken the necessary steps to achieve these results, including the National Outsourcing Strategy, which was adopted in 2015 with the realization that we have to be proactive in promoting, engaging, and winning prospective investors. The strategy has the goal of nearly doubling the employee count of the sector by 2020. Several initiatives have been undertaken by JAMPRO to successfully implement the five-year national strategy. They include the formation of the IT BPO Task Force and the National BPO Coordinator to drive, oversee implementation and update the development work plan for the BPO industry. JAMPRO has also recruited an in-market broker to assist with generating sound investment prospects for the sector and has hosted an Isle of BPO career fair which educated an audience of over 1,000 students and unemployed persons about prospects within the industry. We are also moving to strengthen the enabling environment for the sector including the policy and legislative framework, labor market enhancement, infrastructure development and market penetration. The Development Bank of Jamaica recently committed 73 million US dollars to finance 15 BPO projects island-wide. To date, the DBJ has dispersed over 56.7 million US dollars to the BPO sector, which is roughly 78% of its total loan commitments. These loans are being put towards assisting in the build-out and creation of approximately 1.1 million square feet of BPO commercial space with a projected 24,520 jobs 
to be created when all projects are completed. Last year, we commenced the development of 63,000 square feet in Montego Bay and the 157,000 square feet at the Naga Head Tech Park in Portmore, which will create a total of 6,000 new jobs by the end of 2018. Another of our agencies, the Factories Corporation of Jamaica, has undertaken to design and construct some 750,000 square feet of BPO space, which will create approximately 20,000 new jobs. The job creation potential of the BPO sector is encouraging and augurs well for the government's prosperity agenda. We have begun to diversify the types of works performed in Jamaica to create more opportunities for tertiary graduates. In this regard, the government through the Heart Trust NTA has begun to develop training programs to provide a skilled labor force for the BPO and other sectors. The sky is the limit for the BPO sector and we intend to capitalize on every aspect of this lucrative industry for the benefit of Jamaica and Jamaicans. This administration came to office on a mandate of economic growth and job creation. In just two short years, the economy has begun to grow and thousands of new jobs have been created. As minister, I remain committed to continue on the path of nation building through economic growth and job creation. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Since 2001, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's Labor Market Information System, LMIS, has provided a cost-effective way for employers to source and find suitable employees, as well as for job seekers to find employment. The LMIS has three components, the Labor Market Intelligence, LMI, the Skills Bank, and the Electronic Labor Exchange, ELE. These three components are interwoven to equip job seekers and employers to meet the demand of the labor market. The Labor Market Intelligence Department, LMI, collects labor market information and uses this information to determine trends and factors which influence the market. The department spearheaded the National Labor Market Survey 2017, which was tabled in Parliament by Honorable Minister Shahini Robinson. The survey identified six key findings. One, less than 1% 1 of the workers in the participating firms were foreigners. Two. 80% of firms found it difficult to fill vacancies in their organizations. Three, most firms were optimistic about their business prospects. Four, the hotel and restaurant services had the greatest opportunity for growth in the labor market. Five, demand will be greatest for skills workers in production and services with 72%. And six, 10% of the firms employed persons with disabilities. The survey is beneficial to policymakers, curriculum developers, students, job seekers, and employers who can use the information to assess imbalances in the labor market. Labor market intelligence is also utilized to better position the LMIS to meet the needs of clients. The Electronic Labor Exchange, ELE, is the core component of the LMIS. It's a critical tool for linking job seekers with employers where the in-office services are enhanced by an online portal. Persons can go and register on or offline. They can create their resume um, and post their qualifications. And we match those skill set with jobs that are already posted by employers. What we do is to do preparatory work in terms of getting individuals ready for the world of work. And these are done through our employability skill sessions. And these are done effectively to allow for the individual person 
to be ready to go into an organization and display the relevant soft skills that we want in order to have productivity. It showed me that it doesn't matter what happened in the office or what is going to happen where you go. There's always help and strength there. You should just take the good from it and leave the bad where it is. Without the program, I would not have never gotten that training. Since its launch, the LMIS website has attracted more than 14,000 job seekers and over 1,000 employers, earning their trust and becoming a national employment portal. We have been partnering with the Ministry of Labour to have interns coming in and joining our team for three month periods. What they have been able to do is to come in and to create a steady pipeline for us of talent that we have been able to infuse into the workspace and to be able to fill our entry level roles. The experience has been a good one for us. We've been able to find talent that we can transition into the organization and most of them are still with us and doing very well. I am very grateful for the program. When I left high school, I was in and out of jobs and thanks to the ELE program, I'm here at the COK Sodality. I've been to three departments thus far, and I must say, it has been a very good experience. The LMIS is committed to serving Jamaica's labor force and has been building sustainable partnerships to enrich and increase access to the service. The latest of which has been through the new Employment Opportunities Project, which, is the, which the executing body is youth. And what that does is to allow for our individuals who are conducting our employability skill sessions to be trained in global standards as to how to do it. It also facilitates a development of a mobile app that would allow for individuals to be able to access our web portal. In seeking to cement the public-private partnership, we have signed a um, memorandum of understanding with the Jamaica Library Service with the Manchester Chamber of Commerce and we intend to do that island-wide. Through this MOU, job seekers are able to use both facilities to access the services of the ELE portal, effectively allowing the LMIS increased penetration across the island. To improve human capital and labor market outcomes for the poor, the Ministry has partnered with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, to develop and implement an on-the-job pilot for 1,500 PATH program beneficiaries. Through the Electronic Labor Exchange, we are targeting persons from these households between the ages of 17 to 25 for job placement. Now, before we place them in jobs, we want them to be able to function effectively in the labor market. We want them to be able to retain those jobs. And it is through retaining those jobs that we will truly break the intergenerational cycle of poverty. The LMIS is grooming and empowering Jamaicans to achieve their fullest potential by utilizing labor market information, promoting the services of the ELE, and strengthening labor market opportunities through partnerships. The labor market information system providing easier access to employment opportunities. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Jamaica has an enviable maritime industry. The country's ports are used to transport cargo being sent across the globe. Major shipping lines have also set up shop in the island. Next, more on Jamaica's respected maritime sector. 
the seas call them home, home, where the northeast trade winds dance through the sounds of reggae, where the cockpit country shadows the world's fastest man, the vanguard of the Caribbean. The seas call them home, home to Jamaica. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and the largest English-speaking island state, with the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, essential for a robust shipping industry. Jamaica also has the second largest transshipment hub in the Caribbean. These developments are driven by a commitment to honor the international maritime conventions that Jamaica has signed, establishing a maturing partnership with the International Maritime Organization, IMO. This 40-year partnership brings consistent advocacy for the maritime interests of Jamaica, the Caribbean and small island developing states and the least developed countries. The seas carry them on, shaping an expansive and progressive maritime vision, fueling a structure and infrastructure of container crews and bulk cargo ports, maritime administration and ship registration, maritime education and training. This vision led to the expansion and upgrading of port facilities island-wide to capitalize on additional trade and larger ships accessing services through the newly expanded Panama Canal. The expansion positions Kingston as one of the region's major ports. The Port of Kingston is also equipped to offer a range of maritime logistical services. For example, operating as the regional hub for vehicles delivered to 23 destinations in Central America and the Caribbean. Through German Ship Repair Services Jamaica, the island also offers wet dock repair services and plans full ship repairs with a floating dry dock. Jamaica's commitment to a greener maritime environment guides its fuel diversification with the use of clean fuels including natural gas. The prevention of maritime pollution is also integral in policy initiatives. As part of this thrust, Jamaica is now acceded to the Ballast Water Management Convention 2004 and is also the lead partnering country in the IMO's Global Ballast Partnerships Program. Bunkering is another key element of Jamaica's position as a major shipping center. We supply bunkers not only for vessels calling at Jamaican ports, including cruise ships, but also for those transiting across the wider Caribbean. Falmouth, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, Port Antonio and Kingston, five cruise shipping ports, with the Falmouth Pier being purpose-built for the largest cruise ships in the world. These major cruise ports offer a full range of cruise passenger facilities and services. Awarded the world's leading cruise destination, Jamaica's unique attractions, diverse tourism and numerous recreational and cultural activities are equal sources of attraction for the creme de la creme of the seas, Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship and other major cruise lines. The seas sends them out. Seafarers and shipping staff trained in Jamaica for international service are key to Jamaica's success as a maritime state. The Caribbean Maritime University, CMU, is the sole IMO-recognized maritime training institution in the English-speaking Caribbean for the training of officers. The CMU is now poised to satisfy the region's demands in the expanding maritime and logistics sectors with the opening of five satellite campuses. Through partnership with the Technical Cooperation Division of the IMO, Jamaica helps countries in the region meet their obligations under the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. Jamaica has also chaired for 10 years at the IMO, the organ responsible for the international rules for standards of training for seafarers. Jamaica is committed to reducing substandard shipping in the Caribbean. To meet this objective, the island has hosted the Secretariat of the Caribbean Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, CMOU, since 2004. In addition, Jamaica is host to the International Seabed Authority, 
25 states now have permanent missions to support the regulation and control of all mineral-related activities of the authority. Partnering with the IMO Program of Integration for Women in the Maritime Sector, Jamaica has helped to mobilize maritime women in the region and strengthened their contribution to the safety, security and environmental protection of the maritime industry. Jamaica has also hosted the inaugural Regional Women in Maritime Association WEMAC Conference. Its executive is led by a cohort of strong female leaders, including its first president, a Jamaican. The seas carry them through Jamaica's long-standing advantages, highly developed shipping expertise, and a skilled and educated workforce has seen our maritime sector blossom into an invaluable resource for the Caribbean and the region. A maritime state, a maritime home, bridging the IMO with the Caribbean and the Americas. Let's get together and Feel alright. What Jamaica needs now is greater production. Not just by some, but by everyone. Yes, we must work hard to keep our country alive. And export more. In order to survive, what you make the need now is greater conservation, not just by some, but by the entire nation. If we use less gasoline and electricity, we'll save more in exchange to benefit our country. What you make the need by Jamaica, not just food, clothes, but even our vacation. We'll create more jobs for our people, you'll see. And make Jamaica a better place for you and me. What Jamaica needs now, what Jamaica needs now. What you make a need now, what you make a need now, what you make a need now, is our strength and unity, that's what you make a need now, what you make a need now, what you make a need now. This is where the pages close for today. You may watch our features anytime at your leisure. Just click on over to our website or our YouTube channel. Our social media sites also have loads of information which you may find useful. Join us tomorrow on this station when we'll explore other educational programs. I'm Theodore Henry and on behalf of everyone here at the JIS, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.